What is up, reader peeper? What? What is up, reader people? How you doing? It's me, your girl, your Casey. How's Nano going? Is it sucking? Is it sucking? It's sucking. But not as bad as it used to suck. The suckage comes from me, who made a good decision and decided to screw Nano, and decided I cannot keep going with this manuscript if I know it is trash right now because I rushed the word count. So I'm going back and editing the chapters I already mangled. I got my laptop down here. Behold, the writing set up. I usually write laying on the floor, but I thought this would be a more professional angle. But I'm currently editing chapter nine of my book. In the nano rush, that was awful, I managed to write four chapters, three of which are still bad right now. I managed to rewrite chapter eight and it's very good. I got those emotional beats I wanted to hit because I'm juggling a lot right now. I got characters that know things that other characters don't. I have one person manipulating other people, like moving them into certain situations, like getting the right emotions out of people to further her goals. And because not a lot is happening in this first like quarter of the book, it's all like emotion and conversation and just the tension of what happened in the first chapter and all the backstory that went into that. So if I don't have that those actions and plots to navigate me, I have to rely on the emotions and I was not doing that correctly for Nano. And I honestly just wasn't having any fun and I want to have fun when I'm writing. That's the most important thing. But now that I made the decision to go back and edit, I've regained my love. I'm super happy. I'm also like the sucky part that I mentioned is me going back and reading all this and I'm like, girl, thank you for leaving me all this trash to edit. This might be a good time just to mention one of the things that's not giving me a lot of trouble, but just kind of tweaks me is that this is a fantasy book and fantasy is great. I love it. But the city, not the city, it's more like a village that my characters live in or they live around in depending on what character you are. The village which is called Lethway is a cove village so you know it's right on the ocean basically so that means a lot of boats. I've said this maybe twice before on this channel but I hate reading and writing about boats so I don't know why I decided to include boats in this. So now I have to like research all these boat terms and the main problem with me with boats and even spaceships is that I just have a hard time like imagining the dimensions and size. Like I can see a house because I live in a house and I can imagine the characters and the scale of it. But because even though I live in Florida, I'm surrounded by water, but I never go on boats. And the ones I do go on are like pontoon boats, not like the pirate giant sailing ships of fantasy world. So I'm having a hard time just like envisioning it. So when I'm writing, I have to have like a picture and I have to have like a carpenter schematic of the boats too. One of the characters rides a gondola everywhere. So I had to learn what porch and bow and aft meant, but it's really important to the setting. So I have to nail it. And before I get into some more writing and you guys get to like watch and write with me too, if you want, I also went to the library like yesterday for like the first time in forever and I got a nice little book haul. So I just thought I would show you the books and just brag about them really quick. I got Home Before Dark by Riley Sayer. I have not yet read Final Girls yet and I keep pushing that book off and I don't know why because I do want to read it. I'm gonna finish this one by the end of November and then in December once I finish my other two library books I am definitely reading Final Girls. But this one so far it's a five. I'm um 150 pages in right now and it's just good. The setting's good. We're in like the we're our main character. She's one of those like house flippers. She gets a crappy apartment, renovates it, and sell it for profit. If you watch HGTV, you know what I'm talking about. But our main character, she's is she's kind of infamous because when she was a kid, her dad wrote a book about like all the hauntings their house was going through and what they experienced there. It's a bestseller. So everyone associates her with the six-year-old version of her and she just hates it. She hates living in the shadow of what her father wrote. She hates people just like thinking they know her. She just hates how really secretive her parents were about like the whole topic. Like, they never talk about what happened in that house and she can't remember. So she's just going off of what she knows from that book she hates so much. But her dad does die and to her surprise he leaves her the house, the haunted house that she thought he actually sold years ago. So she decides to go to the house, stay there a couple days, like confront her past but also like fix it up so she can sell it. And some creepy stuff is happening. The chandelier keeps turning on and off. A record player would just like start up in the middle of the night blaring the sound of music. There's someone watching you from the tree line just like peeking around a tree trunk looking at you. And my favorite thing about this book so far is that, yeah, it's told from our girl's point of view, Maggie, 
but it also has snippets of that book her dad wrote in it and it all plays together really nicely so I'm enjoying this right now. I also have The Starless Sea by the same author that wrote The Night Circus. Night Circus was beautifully written but I did not like the book itself because it promised me like a magical duel and it was really about who can like build the most magical circus exhibits. So it was kind of a letdown. Night Circus had a really really like narrator voice to it and it made sense why it was by the end of the book but it still felt really impersonal because a narrator was telling the story. And I actually have no idea what this book is about but I just picked it up. <laughs> Fall beneath the surface of the earth upon the shores of the starless sea. Oh my gosh, is this magical realism? This better not be magical realism. We're gonna Google this real quick because if it's magical realism, I need to know. Cause I hate magical realism. Ugh, man it is. 3.85, I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the Goodreads thing. <sighs> well, I'm not that excited, but I'm gonna read this anyways. Anyway, where was I? There is a labyrinthian collection of tunnels and rooms filled with stories. The entryways that lead to the sanctuary are often hidden, sometimes on forest floors, sometimes in private homes, sometimes in plain sight. I honestly forgot what we're talking about already. <clears throat> but those who seek will find. Their doors have been waiting for them. Zachary Ezra Rollins is searching for his door, though he does not know it. He follows a silent siren song, an explicable, I'm, I'm honestly kind of bored, an explicitable, explicable certainty that he is meant for another place. When he discovers a mysterious book in the stacks of his campus library, he begins to read and is entranced by tales of lovelorn prisoners, lost cities, and nameless Acolytes. Suddenly a turn of the page brings Zachary to a story from his own childhood and possibly written in this book that is older than he is. How freaking long is this summary? A bee, a key, and a sword emblazoned on the book lead Zachary to two people who would change the course of his life. Mirabelle, a fierce pink-haired painter, and Dorian, a handsome barefoot man with shifting alliances. Oh. These strangers guide Zachary through masquerade party dances and whispered backroom stories to the headquarters of a secret society where doorknobs hang from ribbons and finally through a door conjured from paint to the place he has always yearned for. I still have no idea what we're talking about. Amid twisting tunnels filled- why is this so long? Amid twisting tunnels filled with books, gilded ballrooms, and wine dark shores, Zachary falls into an intoxicating world soaked in romance and mystery. But a battle is raging over the fate of this place. And though there are those who would willingly sacrifice everything to protect it, there are just as many intent on its destruction. As Zachary, Mirabelle, and Dorian venture deeper into the space and its history and myths, searching for answers in one another, a timeless love story unspools, casting a spell of pirates, painters, lovers, liars, and ships that sail upon a starless sea. Okay, we're looking for a room. There's a bunch of keys. There's something about a bee, a pink haired girl, barefoot man, guy named Zachary, pirates. That is what I have deduced is going on. And then I have my first ever Sarah J Mass book right here. It's the big one, Crescent City, a house of earth and blood. Do I know what this is about? No, but I picked it up anyways. Love the cover. Looks great. I'm thinking maybe I should vlog this one because it's my first Sarah J Mass book and that's like pretty big deal. Bryce Quinlan had the perfect life, working hard all day and partying all night until a demon murdered her closest friends, leaving her bereft, wounded, and alone. It has a demon in it. I'm intrigued. When the accused is behind bars but the crimes start up again, Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation. She'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. Hunt Athalar is the notorious fallen angel. Oh, juicy. Now enslaved mm, to the arch angles he once attempted to overthrow. This is reminding me of something. Better not be like this thing. His brutal skills and incredible strength have been set to one purpose, to assassinate his boss's enemies. No questions asked. But with a demon wreaking havoc in the city, he's offered an irresistible deal. Help Bryce find the murderer and his freedom will be within reach. As Bryce and Hunt dig deep into Crescent City's underbelly, they discover a dark power that threatens everything and everyone they hold dear. And they find in each other a blazing passion, one that could set them both free if they'd only let it. We got angry. That actually sounds pretty cool. You know what? I believe all these books will be fantastic. This one's already fantastic. This sounds fantastic. 
and I'll even hold on to hope that this babbling mess will make sense when I read it. And speaking of babbling messes, do you guys remember or have you watched that video I did where I let you guys pick another book for me but you did not know what book you were picking because I gave you very bad summaries for it based on what I only read from the first page? If you have watched it, awesome! Thank you for voting and commenting. I gave you guys five options and it was a close, almost tie between two options. Number one and number three. The first option said, dang, this priest ain't got no eyes. The third option was, well, you done ruined that barrel of water, plunging your bloody hands in it. And by a lead of one vote, the winner of the vote was option one, the eyeless priest book, which was a little tale called The Lies of Lac Lamora. An orphan's life is harsh and often short in the mysterious island city of Camer, but young Lac Lamora, awesome name by the way, dodges death and slavery, becoming a thief under the tutelage of a gifted con artist as leader of the band of light-fingered brothers known as the gentlemen kind of bad word Locke is soon infamous, fooling even the underworld's most feared ruler. But in the shadows lurks someone, still more ambitious and deadly, faced with a bloody coup that threatens to destroy everyone and everything that holds meaning in his mercenary life. Locke vows to beat the enemy at his own brutal game, or die trying. You voted for it! And I'm not going to tell you guys what the other four options were, because I might reuse them one day. Because I like this method of picking books for our TBR. It's fun. So in December, this will be read. But right now, this book needs to be written. It's also Thanksgiving right now, so happy Thanksgiving everyone. This will be up on Friday, so happy Black Friday to y'all out there. Am I going outside for Black Friday? No. I have a report to write, and I don't want to spend money on anything besides books. Anyways, let's get writing. I just keep writing with me. I just finished rewriting a little snippet of chapter nine. Like I have one point of view of a dude, like barely another like scene break, another point of view of a girl, barely a page of her point of view, then scene break, then it's back to the guy. And when I was rereading this, I actually forgot I had added that part where the girl point of view, her point of view kind of intrudes. And it's good that I have it here because it needs to be here. But this girl, she is super important to the story. I have four main characters, each of them has their own point of view. This one, the girl who only has like a page interruption in this chapter, her name is Eva. She is six years old and she's like a ball of hatred and vitriol like me. And writing for her is so fun, but it's also really emotional because even though she's only six, she's been through some crap in her life and she's blaming it all on one person, one person who does deserve it. So I'm really just trying to nail the really conflicted feeling she has for this one person. And that one person is the other guy who's in this chapter. The point of view, scene break, then the girl, scene break, point of view, the dude. His name is Paul. P A dingly thing L L. Paul's a jerk. We all hate Paul. I have a lot of jerks in this book and I love it. Oh, those morally gray characters. Only one person, two people in this book are nice and one's not even human. I am making characters people will love to hate. I hate them and I'm their mom. But I did manage to redo Ebba's little page of thoughts right here and I'm gonna reread it and just like tighten it up a little bit and then the rest of this chapter is a lot of scenery stuff going on because we're gonna go into some orchards and stuff like that and over this cool brick bridge a little bit of backstory that's the fun stuff to write in a fantasy book also gonna throw in a corpse or two because you know I like dark maybe at the end of Nano I'll actually be able to give you guys a summary of what this book is so you'll know what the heck I'm talking about but it's still just so new to me and I just feel weird trying to describe it without spoilers because they're all in my mind right now but I am very happy with this writing. I'm not even really keeping track of my word count anymore like I have what I started on and I have what I'm at now but I'll save that till the end of the month. I know I've written over 10,000 words this month so far. Not that impressive but I'm, I'm rewriting a lot of stuff. So I've already mentioned that my the bane of my writing existence is writing about boats. What about you guys? Is it grammar that you struggle with? Sentence structure? Do you feel like dialogue's your weak point? Because if we like just talk about what we need help with, people in the comments will help. Like they got tips. It's just so much fun to talk about like any type of writing together. What we're good at, what we're horrible at. I've also noticed that sometimes I, I'm writing in past third person and sometimes I'll accidentally switch to like present third person. It's rare that I do it, but when I do do it, I mess it up. Like it just like completely ruins the thing. And yeah, it should ruin it because it's not correct to write like that. But I gotta like watch out for that. Also sometimes, I do this all the time. Like if I write 
he walked across the bridge. My fingers were typed, she walked across the bridge. I get pronouns mixed up a bunch, writing. And if I miss it, and when I go back and reread it, I'm like, wait, I don't have a her in this scene. Also, the one word I can never spell right the first time is definitely. My brain just doesn't comprehend that there's an I in it. I'm gonna go back to writing some more angsty people. Then I think I'll take a break and read some Riley Sager. I need to get to page 200 today. My reading and writing schedule is I like to wake up at 4 a.m., read for two hours, write for three hours, then do school. And it works pretty well with me. I'm one of those people, if I get more than six hours of sleep, I'm groggy for the rest of the day. So I work best sleep exhausted, deprived. I can't word right. Ugh, I feel so fat. I had turkey, sweet potatoes with marshmallows on them, green beans, ham, macaroni and cheese, about six rolls. I had water though, that's healthy. I don't wanna eat for like the next day. You know what would be cool to do? I'm kind of talking to myself right now, but you're here. I would love to do just like a live sprint sometimes, but that whole idea of doing a live sprint or anything live honestly scares me because my editor knows there's a lot of dead space with me. Preach. It takes some time for me to word up in my brain, but I guess if I do a live writing sprint, then there's supposed to be a lot of dead air because we're busy writing. Oh, huh, one day I'm just gonna have to do it and push myself out of my comfort zone. Oh, you know what? I'm super excited. I finally got me a calendar and it's a 2021 calendar and I planned my whole next year of videos, all 12 months. I am ahead of the game. <laughs> so that's a little weight off my mind. I love to plan things ahead, except TBRs. I don't like planning TBRs ahead because whenever I do plan a TBR, I always trash it. This is the end of my writing day. I feel fat, sluggish, slothful, disgusting. I just want to lay in bed. <laughs> but I am glad with what all I did today. Got that mood right. Oh, and the next like part of the chapter I'm going to be working on is going to be with those cute little critters I did a speed draw for in a different video. They're called Belvers and they're like, you take a squirrel, you take an anteater, and you take a kangaroo, and you just mash it together and make it really cute. Today was a very good Thanksgiving, and I hope that y'all who are able to this year, and who is able to go out and see family, that you just had a great time. Stay safe when you're traveling, and this will be going up on Friday, so don't kill anyone Black Friday shopping. And take some pepper spray when you're out there. People be crazy. I'll talk to you lovely lads and lassies later. I'm gonna take a nap, then I'm gonna do some sit-ups. Stay ready, my friends.